All right, what's up, HVAC crew? Welcome back to another night of HVAC R&D. We have uh, the whole crew here tonight, me and Ryden. I always say that like we have four or five people on here, but we don't. Uh, we do have a guest tonight. Ryden has uh, wrangled up another one. A uh, good buddy of ours. We've had him on here before. I'll let Ryden bring him in. But, uh, yeah, I got a lot going on tonight. There's a lot going on in the world. and uh, So let's get to it. Yeah, come on. so sensual that yeah come on i like that yeah come on so welcome back a track crew like dennis said the uh the whole crew of the two of us is here um apparently when we were putting our notes together we also had an anonymous frog an anonymous penguin and an anonymous raccoon looking at our notes before uh, our guest came in so apparently there definitely is more people on the show tonight we just don't know about it um Maybe somebody hacked the HVAC R&D email. I don't know. But anyway. Probably. Yeah, it's yeah. very possible. Um, I guess we didn't use that crazy suggested password that they always say to use. Great. I don't know how anyone ever remembers those things. Um, but that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Anyway. Um, so we're very pleased to welcome back a good buddy of ours. Like Dennis said, he's been on the show before. So, uh. Let's bring back our buddy, Mr. Lucas Airbar from EGIA. Thank you, dynamite pronunciation. Oh yeah, we, you're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna screw we're, that. We're up professionals twice. here, man. I think you guys got it the first time. Uh, good to be back. Appreciate you guys having me. Um, always a always a pleasure to show up and talk EGIA or contracting or you know Oscar slaps or whatever we got on the uh, on the docket. I'm not logged into the we have, so. we have so much, so much on the docket this evening. Uh, See, you can tell Lucas has been on the show before. He knows it's coming. Yeah. Right. What? Oh yeah, I got it. We got to We got to try to stay current here. Um, Good walkout song too, by the way. Thanks. Yes. Very classy. I was going to say, everybody, if, if you want a good walkout song, go. You got to hurry and jump on the show before we get copyrighted doing this. So, just going to throw that out there. That's probably a good idea. Um, From a marketing standpoint, as yeah, the marketing, yeah. as the resident marketing guy on the show, I'm going to tell you that's probably a good idea. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, get it while you can. <laughs> yeah. I do try to chop it up as much as I can on the editing, and we'll try to sneak it in there. You can probably get like ten uh, seconds of it in or something. I don't know. There's probably I think there's an amount of, of, of that you can play, but not right. a lot. I'm sure so there's fine. a cover we could steal too. You never know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, as long as I got my <laughs> song in, that's all that I really care. Is there a kids bop? So version? what's up, man? What you kids bop? Maybe we, oh, maybe no, we can right. get that one. Not really? get in trouble. Ryden don't even have kids. Threw that out there. That's I true. feel like <laughs> they're probably actively policing the kids about ones more than they're actively policing <sighs> the Pashkin Paul one. Wings and pizza. Wings and pizza. I'm I'm <laughs> so glad that I'm out of that with my kids. The kids bop versions are bad, man. I'm sorry. I just got to throw that out there. Can confirm. I had to listen to it. I had to listen to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they, I mean, if you think about it, like, you know, people ride around with their kids in the car, right? And they got the pop pop station on. Some of those songs are pretty rough, man. Yeah. I mean, they clean them up some, but the the whole theme behind it's really, really bad. And then they throw it on Kids Bop like it's just totally fine now. 
I'm like, no, you can't put uh, the weekend. Some of his songs, you cannot kids bop that. I mean, what are we doing here? Well, that's I mean, that's no joke. While I was sitting here saying wings and pizza, because that's what they did with WAP. They made it wings and pizza. They did WAP. Are you serious? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, they did. That's the only reason yeah, I went and started thinking that, about man. this. Come on. I'm not kidding. There's no part of that. It's not just the chorus. There's no part of that song they can do. <laughs> Wings and pizza. No. I did no just joke. Google now, now that we're talking about it. I just Googled to see if they did Blurred Lines, but they did not do Blurred Lines because that also wouldn't really work very well. Um, right. You see what I'm saying? Like the whole back backstory of these songs, they just let a kid sing it, clean it up. It's yeah. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Um, I think, by the way, guys, I wanted to mention, since you said I was coming back, I think that you told me the first time I was here that I was your first ever guest to participate in the What Are We Drinking segment. I just want to point that out. I think Actually, so. yes, I believe you were, my friend. Yeah, and I think I started the yeah. trend because I've been popping in and I've noticed I'm not the last one. So no, you guys were not. Ill-tempered, <laughs> Ill-tempered gnome That's is what right. he was doing. That was it. It was, so it was Christmas time because that, that is a Christmas seasonal. And then Ryden capitalized the I on our on our title, and it looked like the third tempered gnome. <laughs> <laughs> when you just when you glanced at it, it was just you know it was three lines. It had been tempered um, twice, but the third time was the charm. Sure. <laughs> yep. Right. All right. So I guess let's get into that. We got a. Uh, we'll start with Lucas. Maybe he's got something special for us. But I'm, I'm continuing the theme, actually. I'm going with, not with Hill-Tempered Gnome, but with Oregon beers. So um, I went with Eugene last time. That's where Oakshire is out of, which is home of University of Oregon, my alma mater. Uh, in the interest of fair play, I'm doing one out of Corvallis, which is the home of Oregon State. Uh, but also it's Block 15, which is probably the best brewery in Oregon right now. It is Fluff's Travels uh, IPA. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, uh, I think it's a limited one. I got Block it. Block fifteen. Stuff. That's an. I haven't heard of that. Now they're uh, they self distribute, so I think they probably are only available in Oregon. Great following. Um, I think they they sell through everything they make, so they're they're doing very well. So I think they have chosen to be the size that they are by self distributing. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good start. Let's you go through it. On. So I am on. Um, so I'm traveling. I'm out in Raleigh. Um, and when I come out here, I have to get a red oak. So it's a, it's an amber ale. Is it an amber no, ale? No, red oak. Right, red oak's more. It's, 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 it's amber. It's, it's an amber lager, isn't it? Lager, amber lager. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's on draft everywhere out here. I just can't get it at home. Um, kind of like a. Uh, yeah, amber lager. Like a. Is it like a uh, Sam Adams? I guess or a something like that i don't know it's it's way better than sam adams sorry sam adams it is better. It's better i would hope yeah, yeah it's way hope. no offense to sam adams but i would hope no well, i know red oak's, <laughs> red oak's really more of a it's a it's a mostly north carolina beer too red oak and hummingbird they're both you know they're two right. main beers which i drink hummingbird all the time well their breweries out here it's a big place i haven't been to it yet i pass it every time i come out here to train and uh it's a giant place. I need to, you can, I mean, when you drive by on the highway, it's like the whole thing's glass and you can see all the towers in there and it's pretty sweet from the highway, but I got to look for it. I just do yingling whenever I'm on the East coast, just cause it's like, ah, you're here. You got to right? do it. So not cause it's great. Well, me but... too. Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's not horrible though. No, no, it's solid. I mean, it's solid. And it's, but it's more like it's, I think it's more nostalgia fueled for me or like, you know, kind of geo limited fueled for me than it is about like it being the best beer you can possibly find on the East coast. But yeah, it's good. It's solid stuff. I remember when Katie right, was talking yeah. about stuff, she said like Yingling had just made it to Texas. I think yeah, I remember her I saying like, something like that. Last month yeah, she said they that. Like, <laughs> like, they like made a huge deal of it, like driving it in on a special truck and filming it and everything or something. <laughs> yeah, they're super limited to like geographically. They are not available in Oregon. They For a long time, they were not available anywhere west of the Mississippi. I know because I looked into it after like I was in uh, like Rochester, New York for uh, six, seven months when I was, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago and uh, got into the habit of drinking it and then talked to somebody like a specialty beer store and they were telling me how it's uh, like it's you guys know it's ubiquitous. It's absolutely everywhere on the coast. Oh, yeah. Once you mm-hmm. get like to the Mississippi previously, it just they do not distribute it, which is odd. But I think they're starting to obviously expand that a bit. Yeah, I know my dad grew up on Miller Lite. 
or I, yeah, he was drinking Miller Lite. That's what I grew up on. And then I let him drink a Yingling Light randomly one day, and that's what he drinks now. Like, <laughs> he's like, I, I mean, what is this Chinese beer? I'm like, Dad, it's not Chinese. What is this Chinese beer? <laughs> it's a really old <laughs> U.S. Awesome. beer. Like, what are you talking about? I think it's the oldest, isn't it? The oldest U.S. beer? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, not not Chinese. He's like, man, this is great. He said, I can't do the green bottle yet. Still working up to that. <laughs> uh, the Yingling Light, I guess that's more comparable to, you know, Nick Ultra or something. But Yeah. All right, Ryden, what you got for so, us? So I'm finishing up a Jim Beam Apple and Ginger, and then I'm going to move oh. to a couple of hitchhikers. <laughs> a couple of hitchhikers? <laughs> <laughs> Can you elaborate? Well, uh, how do we not? How does you not know this story, Lucas? I, that's what I'd like to know. So, Hitchhiker is. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get canceled again. <laughs> again? <laughs> I don't know how I didn't cancel the first time. We didn't have enough listeners yet, I guess. So, uh, what was it? It's probably close to a year now. Um, it was like four o'clock um in the afternoon and i was getting ready to head towards the house because i had about a 30 to 45 minute drive and i stopped to get a red bull and modello tall boys were two for three dollars <laughs> so i bought modello instead and <laughs> Kristen, my wife had sent me a text message asking where i was at i said i'm headed home I said, I'll be there in a little bit. I picked up two hitchhikers and I left it at that. <laughs> she, that was it. She was like, yep. what the hell are you talking about? Excuse me. She probably didn't say hell. She only curses because I brought cursing into her life. It's my fault. Uh, she'll, <laughs> she'll blame me for that always. She's like, I never said a bad word in my life. And then I met you. And that's all I say now. <laughs> what that says for how much I irritate her or how bad my... I curse like a sailor. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, so we're trying. We're trying to start that. Like it's a hitchhiker. Couple of hitchhikers. Like we just, yeah. just call it hitchhiker because I, I don't have any other names for it. So, well, because <laughs> I can't say what I originally called it because then I'd be saying a racial slur. So, can't be. That's safe. probably for the best. So I, those things. I tried a. We went out to eat the other night. At a little Mexican restaurant, and they had a beer on tap. And I'm trying to Google it real quick. Um. Very similar to Modelo, but I had never seen it before. It's a, it's like a, the symbol's like a star inside of a circle. Is it Soul? No, it's not Soul. It's not Pacifico. Um, God, we'll have to come back. I'll never find this again. Oh, I know. Uh, is it? Um, Cut. <laughs> that's not it. Uh, Estrella uh, Ulisco? Yep, that's it. There we go. Nailed it. I know my beer. I knew Lucas. I knew Lucas had me there. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, of course really light beer, but it's definitely it's weird. It's, it's it just has that flavor, right? Like Modelo or um, yeah, Corona yeah, and Soul and stuff. Yeah. Corona. Like I still wanted to throw a lime in it. Dos Equis or yeah, it's good beer. I never seen it before. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I like a good Michelada. Only like in the morning time, but Mitchell out with the like red, red, red beer with the uh, yep. Bloody Mary in there. That's what that's my primary use for Mexican beers. I seen the I seen them making a few of those in the behind the bar there. I still yeah. never drank one of those. Uh, I mean, if you like Bloody Marys, you probably like them. If you don't, then well, I thought not. that's what he was making. He's like, nah, I'm not making a Bloody Mary. I'm like, okay, you yeah. sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just really... I mean, yeah, it's just Bloody Mary mix and then a full Mexican beer. Yeah, I could probably handle that. All right, so we are eventually going to get into some uh, some EGIA stuff. Um, Lucas has got a got some new stuff coming out, but before we get into that, we've got to catch up on some Chris Rock memes. Will Smith, Chris Rock. I mean, what do you? First of all, Lucas, what do you think? You think it was pretty? You think it was real? Yeah, yeah. My first reaction, like everybody else, was that it was not real. Um, I there's no. Nobody looks good I think coming out of it, you know, like what I don't, I don't really, from <laughs> I just, a stage standpoint. I, I know, just like, think, you know, at first Will Smith looked like he went along with it being funny until mm-hmm. he got the look. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, 
And then he had to go quite literally put a smack down on somebody. Yeah, not that trouble. look she had was like, really? <clears throat> yeah. It's... Then I got to thinking, you know, how many times have we seen a comedian get up on stage and just trash people? You know, I keep seeing people talk about that. Like, man, he was just being a comedian. Uh, you know, comedians will rip you. I mean, yeah, the roast and stuff like that. I mean, that's yeah. just what they do, right? Particularly I mean, at the Oscars, that's kind of like you figure uh, they're going to throw some some jabs at like the people who are there. Um, yeah, some shock humor right out of the gate. Uh, it was well, pretty, the other thing I, is, I was going to say the other thing is like I felt like from everything that I saw listening to it and hearing about it this morning because I didn't actually watch it happen. I heard all the news about it this morning. But, right. you know, I thought Jada Pinkett Smith was pretty open about having issues. Like, like, and I thought she was being open about it, you know, so other people could, you know, be able to deal with their problems. You know, if a celebrity can deal with it, anyone else can. So, you know, I, at first it seems like maybe it would have been, you thought they kind of would have taken a bit of it and all in good fun. Cause it's something she's been public about struggling with, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. No, that was a, <laughs> Apparently not. It was a really yeah. good open hand slap. It was so, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> Chris, Chris Rock, Rock freaking right? took it too though. Didn't yeah. He? He's yeah. Like, yeah. He did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was so bizarre. the more I watch it, I think, I think what kind of guy does it take to stand there? And keep going. Just he <laughs> crushed it. Like he, I mean, think about it. What's your, what's your first reaction? Somebody just open hand slaps you in the ear. Like, and you're just like, wow, I just got slapped by Will Smith. I mean, that's not <laughs> yeah. my first reaction, right? Yeah. Like that was his though. That's what he said. Of course. Well, though he's Smith, like, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And I think he was still did. like trying to figure out if it was a joke. I think he was, I think for sure when Will started walking up, he thought like, oh, he's in on the, like, he's going to do he, like, you know, fake confrontation, like joke. I think when he was walking away, Chris Rock was still like, was that for real? Is that serious? Is that a joke? Yeah. He's like, you seriously, right. what, what do I do here? Well then he, ta- he towered him too. I didn't realize how big Will was like, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's probably six, two, six, three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I, 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 so I was watching it live. I'm a big Oscars guy. I watch all the nominated movies and then I watch the Oscars every year. Um, I, yeah, I think everybody, my like group text immediately was like, no, nah, that can't be real. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I don't, nobody looks good coming out of it. There's no, I, why would, why would Chris Rock agree to it? Why would Will Smith do it? Yeah. And the yeah. only thing anybody comes up with is like, oh, the Oscars ratings have been falling. And it's like, all right, I don't, that doesn't mean that those two superstars, like an A list movie star and a pretty iconic comic, are going to like sully their reputations to help the Oscars. Right. I, it's, it's, I don't know. Like, pragmatically, not, I don't uh, get it. It was not Kimmel and Matt Damon. Just say that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I know Chris Rock's been, uh, his, his career's been kind of dwindling a little bit. Um, and I've heard that his l- next few shows are completely sold out now, which, so that worked out well. I um, mean, but he's still, I don't know, what's he worth? A yeah. hundred million dollars. He just had a star turn on the latest season of Fargo where he was like, oh, this guy's a dramatic actor too. Um, right. <laughs> I think he's doing just fine. Oh yeah. No, I'm not worried about him. He's yeah. So that was interesting. And all the course, all the memes, uh, the HVAC memes were awesome. Um, <laughs> Dude. HVAC guys did not let us down with the, <laughs> is this your, is this your uh, capacitor or this is our capacitor? And it's like slapping the other brand, you know, that's awesome. What was the, uh, uh, did you see the one, uh, there's that one guy, was it HVAC 452 that always put something out about Jeff yeah. all the time. And his was like, uh, <laughs> Uh, Jeff going to the supply house and them telling him they're out of Unistrut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean we the HVAC HVAC community jumped right on there. Um, I mean that 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 picture of him, you know, turning his head and the hand out. Like, I mean, I can think of a million. Like we were talking before the show came on about sports, right? Like, throw a team on each one of them's face, and there you go. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, he's uh, Will Smith is becoming memes at a regular rate these days. 
because um, <laughs> there's the one of him sitting there with misty eyes kind of crying during the tv show from the last year too that's like one of the biggest memes of the last six to ten months which probably factored into like what happened you know that he's felt like right. he's been kind of made the butt of jokes for the last year and he had enough Oh yeah, he let it out. He, he let got- it out, and he just made himself an even bigger butt of a joke. So yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. And how did they let him stay too? I was like, I mean, I guess because they're like, we don't. Well, want they to didn't have much of a choice. He was going to get an award, so they didn't want to kick him out. I mean, that's that's it, right? That's the only reason I would imagine because they no, know man. like he was a heavy favorite to win. So they're like, all right, he's about to get this thing in ten minutes. Are we really going to like have to be like, oh, uh, Will Smith's not here to accept? And it's like, yeah, we know he's now, not here to accept. Imagine. If they kicked him out and then they made Chris Rock go accept the award in his place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, if they wind up co-hosting together next year, then I'll say, okay, it was faked. It was not mm-hmm. real. Uh, if, if that happens, if the co-host no. of next year, Chris Rock and Will Smith, then it was a ploy. No, no, because then it, it's it's definitely not a ploy then. They, they, would, they would make it even more about their ability to come out of it better men and have better brotherly love. That's what it yeah. would be. It would still yeah. not have been staged. It would have been a miraculous year where they turned their relationship around. <laughs> oh man, he was on. Chris Rock was on the Fresh Prince once, like on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Like they've known each other for thirty years, twenty five. Oh yeah, it is. like he was on. He did an episode, played two characters actually. I remember. Um, so yeah, I mean they've known each other for a very long time. It wasn't weren't Chris Rock and Jada Smith both in those animal movies? Uh, yeah, oh, uh, Madagascar. Yeah. Dude, there was I saw a, a meme this guy put yeah, on something. It was like, it was like, you tell me what's his name from uh, when Will Smith was in what was it Shark Tale? Just smacked what's his name from Madagascar over the hippo <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fertile ground. There's endless uh, endless ammunition. <laughs> Gosh. Well, then there's the you know uh, Will Smith doesn't have to cussing his records the <laughs> m&m yeah and then he's just f-bombing him while he's out there sitting the- it was weird because oh, yeah, that's like i feel like he's built his whole like personality his like public persona off that right will smith is like he's the clean like family clean, friendly yeah, yep. never cursed in a rap never killed a guy in a rap um it was very yeah and then it's oh, he was, was upset was, he was that yeah yeah for sure but yeah speech wasn't great either the like acceptance speech kind of <laughs> rationalized what he did but uh, all right all right, so I got on the notes here. Ride and type some of these out, and I have no idea. Oh yeah, Lucas and Chi Town. Yeah, what do we got going Chi-Town. on here? I did go to Chi Town. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to Chicago to see them turn the river green. They did it. How about that? Nice. Uh, that was pretty much it. Yeah, I just went vacation. Um, and uh yeah it's an awesome place i don't know you guys are so how does that go how does that go down when you go there is everybody just hang out is there bars up down the river or uh no i just went and was like hey look there's a green river and then i left so also the like (laughs) from the hotel room (laughs) yeah i actually could see it from the hotel room uh (laughs) in point of fact the uh the like generally regarded as like the number one burger in the country is in Chicago and also generally regarded as one of the best pizzas in the country is in Chicago. So those are both on the, on the mandatory list. So those are probably as, as priority items as seeing the green river. I was going to say, I think that's an even bigger priority. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, is that deep dish? I'm guessing. Uh, yes. Yeah. They have a few actually yep. well-regarded non deep dish, but yeah, Pequod's is the one that is, um, it's a very, very beloved, uh, I saw some list before I went that had it as the number two pizza in the country. Um, so that's like a meal, right? Yeah. The, the deep dish up there is, is it's like eating a, like lasagna yeah, it was, crust yeah. on it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you can split like a small probably. Yeah. Cause yeah, a slice is, is like a meal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But worth it. Chicago's awesome. Always. Well, speaking of comedians now, did you see, I know you and I talked about this briefly. Now, did you see Bargatze when you were up there or did you see him? Oh else? yeah. No, that was, uh, that was in Eugene. So he's, it was one of those, uh, one of those COVID things. I bought tickets to see Nate Bargatze in Eugene, which is 110 miles South of Portland, uh, in 2019. And nice. those same tickets finally came to fruition after three <laughs> delays and two cancellations. Way to plan ahead. Um, Lucas. I know, right? <laughs> Since the, I bought those tickets, they added a show to Portland, which would have required me traveling four minutes instead of two hours. But 
I was like, you know what? I bought these tickets three years ago and I'm using them. So yeah, it was amazing. You're you right. And you said you're a, you're a fan, right? Yeah. He, he's pretty funny. Yeah. It was great. He was yeah hilarious. Um, yeah. He's about as, about as good as it gets out there right now. I feel like comedian wise. So what's the, uh, what's the COVID protocol out there right now for stuff like that? Uh, so that was Are before they... the, like we were down, the show was on a Thursday and Saturday was the last day of mandatory indoor masks. So it was still full COVID protocols. Okay. But I think by Friday, everybody was kind of starting to get pretty lax. So like, I don't think anybody's writing us a ticket before this thing changes in eight hours. Um, but right. yeah, it was definitely masks on for the, uh, for the show. Yeah. Last week we went and saw, um, slash featuring miles Kennedy, um, at a little small, it's the Fillmore. Love that place. Charlotte. Man. That's such a cool yeah, little spot. That's I'm going to have to go back to there. I mean, it's, it's standing the whole time, but you know, it's a rock concert. So you get over it. Yeah. But get it bigger. I guess I'm getting a little older. I'm just kind of like, man, it'd be sweet to have me a little seat back here. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can get uh, a VIP. But, yeah, that's right. But, uh, yeah. So when we first bought the tickets, probably a month and a half ago, it was, uh, um, vaccinated or, you know, negative test to get in. And, uh, by the time we went, it was zero anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think we My had son was, you know, he was like, God, I don't really want to get the vaccine. You know, he's got a little small heart condition. He was skeptical of that. And he's 17. That was going to be his first like big time rock concert. Um, they, they swiped that and he's like, we're in sweet. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, that's, that's quite a first concert. The, the first rock concert slash. Yeah, Slash had a little. Speaking of COVID, he had a couple COVID pounds on him. No, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, COVID. Pounds. He was. I mean, he was kind of ripped, but he was. He was kind of. He was kind of thick, man. Up there, it's just weird to see him like that. But I mean, what? What's how old is say, Slash? How old is he? He's got. He's got to be pushing right. sixty, right? Dude. If not, I mean, like, I'd put the over under like at like okay sixty one and a half. Actually, he's not as old as I thought he was. I mean, he literally looked the same. He's 56. Like, <laughs> hmm. God, he's 56. Yeah, he's 56. That, they must he, have been so young. He destroyed it, man. Oh, yeah, he started. Yeah, I mean, so it was Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the conspirators. Um, so it was basically a 10-minute solo at the end of every song for Slash. <laughs> like, I don't know how he played a guitar that, that long. Like... At that age now that I know he's that old, I'm like, God, man. He's got magic in that fingers top hat, held man. up for that. <laughs> yeah, and he was frosty. loving it. So <laughs> it got kicked off the first song, and I, we're probably 10 rows back. Of course, everybody's just standing up, but I could see feet like up up in the crowd. Like I could see feet. I'm like, is somebody crowd surfing seriously in here? <laughs> and it was a 75 year old lady yes. crowd surfing <laughs> and they sent her all the way to the front. Of course, security came out there and, uh, they kind of like stopped like sharp at the end of the song. And they're like, is this really happening? Like Slash went over to the mic and he's like, how old are you? <laughs> and you know, you can't hear. Her and he's like 75. He's like, get up here. Jesus. He said, this is the weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and they like get her up there and he signed some stuff for her and yeah dude she was crowd surfing my son was like what is going on here that's awesome but <laughs> yep pretty good show pretty yeah good show. yeah i definitely am like not that person anymore i uh yeah the older i get i'm the same way and you're like oh i could use a chair i'm like oh man i, I needed a chair yeah <laughs> i like my, my friends invite me to like football games because like again i live you know an hour and a half two hours from University of Oregon, where we where I went to college, and it's like during football season. I'm like, I gotta like really think if I actually want these football tickets to go to the game or not. I'm like, I could watch every game on TV at home, and beer's free. Um, yeah, yep. and it's like comfortable, and I'm not gonna miss. Like, I'm, I'm very avid college football fan, so I'm like, I'm not gonna miss the rest of the day of college football. Uh, yeah, it's like the older I get, the more that experience. Well, you got changing. the you got the you got the buddies that are uh, tailgating, and you're like. 
you know, your anxiety's up for that because you're like, man, if I if I get in the right mood out here, I may not even make it in. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's <laughs> always that's, that's definitely always a risk. <laughs> <laughs> I may not even make it in the game here. Yeah. I'm gonna be. Yeah, I mean, it's a full day. It, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I go in there, and we we all make it up to the front, and I'm like, oh, so we're just gonna stand here for two and a half hours? All right. Okay. Um, I'm looking around trying to find a pole to lean on or something. hundred percent. I mean, it started at nine, you know what I mean? On a Monday. God almighty. Sounds familiar. Feeling, feeling it. Yeah. I was like, man, yeah, not, not a chair in that place at all. It's just kind of, uh, intimate little, just stand around and watch the show, you know? Speaking of old rock musicians, Did you see the other crazy news this weekend? Maybe. I don't know. Taylor Hawkins died, man. Oh, yeah. I did see that. No more Foo Fighters drummer. Yeah. He must not have been. I mean, he was not even 50, I imagine. He was 50. He was 50. 50. Substance abuse is what it looks like there. Oh, gotcha. mm, Problem before anyway. That was always his problem. Yeah, that's crazy. And I yeah, was, we've had we've lost <laughs> some music folks in the last year. Well, and Chris and I were just I was just talking about trying to maybe see them because they're supposed to be in Charlotte in May, but um I don't know if that's still gonna well, it'll probably still end up happening, but I'm curious if Dave's gonna end up behind the drum set or who's coming in. Who is he drafting in? I guess we're gonna have to send Corey down there. We should. He would do well. <laughs> yep. Can you do? Can you do right. like would like, Phil Collins when he did it? Would he? Would he lead sing while he was drumming? Or yes. Did he not drum when yeah, he was. Yeah, he would. Singing? He just can't. Well, you know, he can't yeah. at all now. He just has a. I saw. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah. So sad. Okay, so they would. So reasonably, Dave Grohl could could drum and sing still. Yeah, which I mean, Taylor used to. He'd sit back there and drum and sing songs every now. To and me, before. that's a lot, man. When you see a drummer <laughs> singing, like God, there's so much like there's so much going on, rubbing your stomach and patting your head going on there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> a shitload of that. Like I don't know how they, man. That's you have to be in tune to do that for real. That's yeah, a whole no other doubt. animal there. All right, so let's get into Lucas has got some pretty good news for us coming up for some EGIA stuff. You want to get into that? Yeah, sure. We can we can chat about that. I uh, it's actually it will be this is more or less the world premiere of this information. We're we're announcing it on Friday when I think this drops. Um, so we <clears throat> the last couple of years have done a very popular program um, called Seizing the Summer uh, that we've done. I think the last two years uh, that is basically just a, a weekly kind of video streaming show coaching series. Uh, to just kind of help contractors make the most of the busy season, um, which, you know, I know obviously impacts everybody, uh, probably have yeah. listening and certainly both of you guys. Um, and so, yeah, we have this program uh, season the summer. It's just kind of, you know, summer's right around the corner. You're probably going to get more phone calls, website visits, just overall potential sales leads um, over the next several months than really any part of the year. Otherwise, uh, dep- obviously, depending on where you are, not every place is as kind of um, subject to, to seasonality, right? But in, in right. broad swaths of the country, cooling season is about as big as it gets. Um, I guess pretty much everywhere. I guess not everybody has necessarily the heating season, but cooling season is pretty yep. pretty near universal. Um, so this is uh, the kind of the new season of our acclaimed weekly streaming coaching series um, that kind of makes sure everybody's prepared, strategy in place to get the most out of every single lead, maximize your revenue kind of while the calls are pouring in. Um, and so it's going to be a, a, an 18 week program every, every week, there'll be a new episode. Um, and I can on, on Friday, we're announcing this as well as the first six, we're going to preview the sneak peek of the first six episodes, um, that launched at the beginning of May. Um, and then one a week through there. So, um, I can, I can share a couple of those titles, uh, and kind of who, who's going to be behind the camera. Um, just to kind of, I guess we can get the conversation rolling about busy season. Yeah, sweet um, world premiere. Yeah, absolutely. So world premiere, everybody. 
Yeah, these are. Uh, this will be available. It's a. It's exclusively a member benefit for uh, Contractor University um, by EGIA members. Uh, anybody listening, I'll give you the, the the insider information, which is everybody is has access to a free thirty day trial, no risk, no money at all. Um, so if you just kind of want to see what this looks like, then just wait until the beginning of May to start your trial, and you'll get to see the first four for free. Um, there so you go. first one is uh, going to be Weldon Long. I think we probably all know Weldon Long here, right? New York Times bestselling author Yep. Um, on prioritizing leads for maximizing revenue in peak season. Um, the next one is Scott Deming, uh, who is going to be talking about managing time during your busiest season. The uh, third one is Gary Ellix. Again, I think probably everybody knows Gary um, in the industry. Uh, he's going to be going a little more in depth on stuff. He's, you know, he's got a pretty... Uh, Pretty impressive mind. He's going to be talking about getting the service pricing accurate during the season, which is obviously, particularly when your leads are pouring in, that's when you need to make sure your uh, your pricing structure is kind of locked in and solid. Uh, and then right. we got James Leichter talking about maximizing service agreements during the summer. Should I be stopping in between these? Should we be like chatting about these? I don't know what no, the best cadence is. No, here. we can do you no, you're good. Room, and then we can kind cool. of go back to them. All right. Yeah. There we go. So James Leichter will be talking about maximizing service agreements during the summer. Uh, again, that's, you know, service agreements are probably. Uh, arguably the biggest kind of marketing activity you can um, you can really use uh, as a contracting business, certainly one of the ones most capable of driving revenue, driving uh, brand loyalty. So, um, you know, when you're in houses more than you're ever going to be in houses, that's kind of the time to make sure you know how to how to get the most out of them. Uh, then the, right. the fifth one is, uh, is Rob Schallenberger. Uh, he's going to be talking about maintaining high morale and productivity. And then the sixth one. Uh, which is going to be going, uh, I think, the second week of June is again Gary Ellix. will be talking about controlling labor costs when the heat is on. Um, so again, that's the first six. It'll be eighteen total episodes, but that is the uh, the first six as they stand now. Nice, sweet. Yeah, I mean, you know, we I deal with uh, I talk to techs all the time that are just just coming up, just getting started, and you know, we get through with a service call on the phone and. If we got a good relationship, you know, they're always like, man, I got to get, I got to get some leads coming in. And when they, when they do come in in the summer, I don't have time to manage my company. And then the fall hits and they're like, all right, what do we need to do to grow business? You know? And I feel like nobody's ever ready for the summer, even though it's comes the same time every year. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's a lot, right? It's a lot on a guy that's, you know, Maybe he got a maybe he got a decent loan, right? And he's ready to dump a bunch of money and grow. You know, where do you start? Um, it's kind of it's it's tough, man. It really is. There there is no just. I feel like you got to partner up with somebody like EGIA or something, right? Because yeah. you get you get. There's got to be a process to it, right? Well, and I had I had guys, particularly those three to four, five, six guys in a company where. You know, you try, you, there'd be different times of the year. You'd talk to them about co-op and they'd be busy and they didn't want to talk about it. And then come, you know, October, they're dead and they're wanting to know what they can do to use their stuff to suddenly just all of a sudden have leads pouring in. I said, man, I said, there's nothing you can do to immediately change it right now. It's not a quick fix. It's got to be something that's planned for all year long. And it's just, that's, that's hard for a lot of guys to sit down and just have the time to do and figure out that they have to do that. And you know, you push them towards different resources, towards different ideas, but a lot of times it just, you've got to just keep kind of hammering at home that if they don't start focusing on that, on a perpetual year by year to year thing, you can't just suddenly decide you're going to get a bunch of leads and go to work and then not continue trying to get a bunch of leads. Yeah. And there's so much that goes into, I mean, there's just so many elements to it. Like the one hand we were talking about the, like, pricing right right where it's like too many times we've heard horror stories from people who have that exact you know they're like all right well now now they're they're busy right they're getting leads but didn't have you know their service labor rate right for example um right or didn't know yeah just didn't know the proper like overhead structure and so then it's like all right well (laughs) if you're priced wrong then leads are the last thing that you need right and that's just gonna that's just gonna hasten your your way out of business um so yeah, it's, you got to make sure you're, you're right on pricing. And then other thing is that, you know, we we're talking about like service agreements, right? That's, you know, that's how you can also kind of try to schedule 
service. That's how you can try to schedule labor throughout the year, right? That's how you can take advantage of busy season to say, all right, let's let's get these leads going. Let's get these people into the program. And then that's how you fill in shoulder season. Service agreements are, are how you fill in the shoulder season so that yep. come, you know, September, October, um, you're not like, well, boy, I wish we would have made more money in July because the coffers <laughs> are dry now. Yeah, like a crab fisherman. Exactly like a crab <laughs> fisherman. I'm going to put that in our next uh, campaign. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. deadliest catch slash HVAC. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it is like that, right? It Everybody's is. trying to, my boss would be like, we got to catch one more call, one more call, one more call. And it was like, you know, 50 million hours of overtime. For me to change two more capacitors and that's not profitable right like you, yeah just because it's busy right? you still you got to capitalize but sometimes capitalizing isn't just doing 10 more calls and and you know your guys are trashed like yep. in the first month of hot weather they're just ready to just get it to a different industry like you don't want to do that oh 100 percent, uh, yeah and that's we hear that so often too the like the people who just, who lose, well, I mean, just in general, I guess there's a t- so, so much seasonal hiring when actually the, the, like, the best kind of companies in the industry don't really um, hire seasonally, you know, they actually are able to, again, schedule a lot of this labor throughout the year and, and keep people busy year round. But, um, you know, one of those, I guess, what was it? I think it was Rob Schallenberger I mentioned. He's, you know, he's from Becoming Your Best Leadership, Steve Schallenberger's son, he's a big industry guy, but they're all about leadership, productivity, efficiency. And um, yeah, his, his one, on, uh, I think it was the first one in June, on maintaining high morale and productivity like that's i mean that's so key right because it's so easy like you just mentioned like it's so easy to get burnt out when it's like all right do me a favor we're just gonna work 80 hour weeks and i'm gonna make a lot of money for it (laughs) try to try to keep up and it's like well that's not gonna yeah yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna work um so yeah Yeah, he can't figure out why his turnover so high i can't find good techs no you had a good tech you just ran him off yep right? yep like, yep exactly that's the thing is you know we all know about the the workforce shortage right but again it is still and, and it's real it's very genuine i'm not saying it's not the case and it certainly impacts companies all over the place but again the, you know the leading companies the big ones the guys that are looked at as like industry leaders aren't really having trouble finding people to hire or or having trouble retaining people which is even more important right um yep yeah that's just because you know they know how to set the right culture right it all starts with culture and that's um that's probably more important during the summer when you're asking people to be, you know, probably working a little bit of overtime, you know, that their families are going to be feeling the, the stress of that as well. Um, it's just a, it's a top to bottom thing. That's not just, well, Hey, run a couple more leads. I'll give you a couple more bucks. Like it, it, it goes a little deeper than that. Right. Well, and I think, you know, oh, culture yeah. is something that has been a, a heavily debated topic on the show the last few weeks anyway. So, you know, you bringing that back up just continues to reinforce, you know, what Dennis and I talk about and what we've had a lot of guests talk about is, you know, one of the most important or if not the most important part of your business is building a culture that is around, you know, just uplifting everybody and just building for the future. And you've just got to have that positivity running through the core of your business or you're, you're going to have problems. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else is going to, there's somebody else in the industry who's willing to pay that tech or that comfort advisor, what you're willing to pay them, you know? Um, so certainly money is a driving factor. People talk about, you know, other kind of fringe benefits and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, money, money is still going to like, that's, we're still working because we need the money, but somebody else will pay that person what you're willing to pay them. So they're going to stay for, you know, for that culture, for that respect, for, um, you know, feeling like they're part of the team. Yeah. I've heard that, you know, we had a, we had a little work meeting, uh, managers meeting last week and for our company and we were talking about culture and um one of the managers said that i don't know what the percentage is but most people don't leave leave their job for pay right they end up it's it's for something else so um yeah i feel like you could have anybody on this show you could have a podcast every day with somebody different and culture and building your own brand will ring out with anybody in this industry, whether it's, you know, whatever. I mean, if you're a rep or a salesman or a counter guy or whatever, right. I mean, and everyone's got a different take on how they build it. And the nice thing is you can kind of sit back and listen and you can pick the pieces out of each and everyone's plan to build your own plan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, that's, 
And that's the beauty of it, right? Because no, nobody has exactly your company. They can, you know, somebody, you know, these guys were talking about Gary Alex, Scott Deming, whatever. They, they can tell you what, what's worked at their companies. Um, but that's, you know, that that's not, every company is different. And you and you hopefully have an idea of, you know, what, what resonates in your marketplace, what resonates with your people. Uh, and if you don't, then you even more so need to get some ongoing training going on. Um, right. Good. Because, yeah, that is. Good well, segue. Good segue. Good job, marketing guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, so let's say I'm a, I've got, I'm a little four man operation, right? Maybe, uh, I don't know, five to 700,000 a year revenue company in HVAC. Let's say I sign up for EGIA throughout the year. Is it possible to reach? I mean, is there people to reach out to for just small things i mean how does that work when you get signed on yeah absolutely um just in-house people you know what i mean i do yeah so we have there's definitely um your kind of your primary ambassador your primary liaison i guess would be your your member services rep so that's the person that can kind of walk you through everything on the platform right so so you contract your university uh powered by ega egia that's kind of the primary training platform and um, I know I've been on before and I know, uh, I think Jeff has been on before as well. So you guys probably got the rundown on that, but just the quick catch up on that would just be, that's, that's an online training platform. Uh, well, I, I should say it's a training platform online and off. So that's, there's a suite of kind of online courses where you can go through each one has a streaming class on a certain topic. Sorry, go ahead. You jump in there. No, you're good. Okay. Um, where, you know, there's, there's 10 classes each, at each one, uh, or 10 segments, each one, you know, a 20 minute video or whatever on financial structure or pricing or service agreements, whatever it is, uh, you can send your whole team through that. Um, there's kind of like resources that, that, and so that, that right there, the classes, there's probably 25 topics on that. So that's, that's going to take you all the way through to a, basically like expert level, um, on any of these subjects. Uh, then there's some other stuff as well. That's like a little bit deeper. There's the best practices library. That's kind of like Google for contractors. So that's going to be. You know, if you're like, well, is there a, a marketing postcard I could I could use to send out during the busy season that's worked before? Yeah, absolutely. Gary Alex owns a bunch of companies. Um, he's uploaded those marketing, literally the actual template. You can use his. You can just plug your name in. You can download it off the system. You can find his flat rate pricing structure in, in like a, an editable Excel uh, Word file or document. Okay. Um, yeah. So any any of this stuff, basically almost anything. There's oh, there's also deeper dive videos as well to go. You know, a little more kind of mastery level than the classes took you. Um, so anyway, the point is there's a slew of of resources of content on virtually anything you could possibly ask about from a business development soft skills side. Um, not necessarily the te the technical training. We kind of leave that to the other people, but we do the the business development, the soft skills, the you know pricing stuff like that, um, marketing, sales, lead generation. And so, you know, we, we, you have your member services person who is going to be there to, you know, when you call up and say, Hey, I, I just need to know, you know, uh, a flat rate pricing system. I need to know kind of a, a busy season marketing plan, um, whatever that is. They're the ones who say, yeah, that's actually in the system. I'll point you exactly to where that document is. It's either going to be something that's going to teach you how to do it yourself. Um, or there's something that's already built out and you can just really apply it to your company. Um, because you know, it, it's, we're not going to do it for you. Obviously that's not how people, that's not how people learn well, but like we were, we're going to walk you right. through every, every element of it. Your, your business is going to be better for it, obviously for that. But, um, so that's, that's like the member services standpoint. And then on the other one, we also have business success coaches. Uh, we actually get a day a week out of Drew Cameron's time. Drew is, uh, he is actually an award-winning uh, consultant. He was the international consultant of the year for whoever gives out that award a few years ago. Um, so Drew, you can book with Drew or Daryl is our other business success coach. These are, these are guys who have actually worked in contracting companies um, successfully. They've kind of know what it takes to raise up a contracting company. As a, as a member, you can book a monthly session with them as a loyalty rewards member. So that's somebody who's been a member for more than a year or somebody who is on an annual payment plan. You actually get a free monthly session, um, coaching session. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so again, Drew Cameron guys, uh, you know, he's a keynote speaker. You see him all over the industry. You can have a, a monthly session with him to just talk for 45 minutes about your business. So that's, you know, that's stuff completely tailored to your, to your business. If you're, you know, a, a hundred truck company, if you're a two truck company, if you're just by yourself, you know, if you're looking to right. get to the next level of success, if you're looking to figure out how to break even, 
um, you know, how to make money, whatever it is. Yeah. We have, we have people there, there for you. So, and that's, that's a big thing that, you know, Dennis and I bring up consistently is talking about some of these smaller guys and how they can kind of take things to the next level. And, you know, where are these different jumping off points and every, every single different market you're in is going to have kind of different jumping off points. So being able to, you know, call on someone such as Drew Cameron or anyone else is mm-hmm. a massive, massive leg up for these guys yeah. to be able to, to go for. So I think it's something a lot of people should look at, you know, training is training, but you know, there are a lot of things we can, you can really be strategic with the kind of training that you get. Um, and you know, if you're really looking to push things forward, you know, you want to partner with someone like EGIA or I won't name any other names because that's what we're talking about. So, <laughs> but you want to have, you know, you want to have someone that you can call on. You want to have resources you can go to and having someone like EGIA that has such a huge realm to pull from, you know, that gives you a real leg up and advantage. And it also, you know, everything through EGIA is about you building your brand. The most important thing you can do for your business is build your business's brand because that's the one you're stuck with you know, from the beginning to the end. Yeah, right. uh, it's the truth. Yeah, and, you know, anything can happen with anything else, but you've got to build yourself. So being able to focus on someone that's about you building your brand and your brand only is a huge advantage. Absolutely. And I, I will, you didn't, I appreciate you not saying it, but I'll say it for you. If you're doing training with anybody, you're doing a good thing for your business, whether it's EGIA or somebody else, yep. um, you should be doing that. Uh, I work for EGIA because I believe in the product, I believe in the company. Um, it's a nonprofit, so we put all the money we make back into creating more resources. So um, for that reason, the, the one thing I do hear more often than anything is that it seems like our resource, our content is newer than most. Um, obviously in our right. in this industry, you know, five or 10 years old, particularly with the way the internet, social media, stuff like that has evolved, um, is a completely different thing. I went to school for marketing. Um, I did not learn anything about how to like digitally advertise, how to use Google ads because it was the mid 2000s and that didn't exist. Um, so you can see how quickly <laughs> things no evolved. TikTok. Yeah, exactly. No TikTok. Um, so yeah, if you're doing it with anybody, you're doing a good thing. Um, I just, I, I think obviously EGIA, that's, that's why I work there. It's because I believe in the products, but, um, yeah. And it, you know, there's, there's no shame in not most people who own a contracting business, not everybody, but most people are a contractor by trade, right? So they know the ins and outs of that trade, like nobody else, they know the technical side of that trade and they know some of the other side, but there's no shame that if, if, if you came up as a contractor, you wouldn't know proper accounting principles, you know, like how to, you know, right. how to, maybe, you know, the service labor rate, but you know, even that it, it can get pretty nuanced and in depth and it's just, it's not your skill set, you know, yeah. um, I would not be the person to, to do a surgery on you because it's, I didn't go to school for that. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, this is, this gives you access to a lot of those things that, that you wouldn't necessarily know. And that's, like I said, that's, that's really why we don't, why we've never built out a proprietary technical training platform because we figure, you know, most contractors, most contracting business owners, um, they know that side of things. They know that side really well, um, as well as we do. So, um, you know, we're here to, to support those things like, you know, mar- marketing, like lead generation, like, um, you know, accounting principles, stuff like that, that you don't necessarily know, but are still um, extraordinarily crucial to, to contracting business success. Well, I'm talking about um, accounting and financials. I actually found out a couple of weeks ago that uh, a contractor I've been calling on for some time actually uses uh, Optimus for all their financing. Oh, yeah. So, so that was one of the one of the times, you know, on this side of the country that I've ran into someone that's using something through you guys. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Optimus is awesome. I, I unfortunately am not the one to talk to, to it as in depth as like a Matthew Bryce, who is the head of our financing team. But, um, I, I've worked with him on a little bit of this stuff and it's, it's a, people are really, really liking the program. It, it wraps basically all your financing options into a single platform. So that's, that's like prime lending down to lease to own. And everything in between takes, um, I think approval rates, oh, wow. I think the industry standard approval yeah. rate is something like 72, 73%. And I think we're approving it over 92% right now. Um, so it basically eliminates the no, just, but it runs a, it's, uh, there's a, some technical stuff to it. That's probably a little bit over my head, but, um, basically runs a soft credit check against people. So instead of starting with a no, you know, you go to, to a, a home loan or whatever, and you say, Hey, do I qualify for this? They say, no, you don't come back and try again another time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one instead runs you against every option available. And then, and so it finds for the homeowner, instead of starting them off on that negative, starting them off on that no, and then saying, well, let's try the next one. Um, it's instead we're going to, it's going to find a product that fits the homeowner right now without having to start off on that negative. So it's, it would be sort of similar 
Matthew would probably cringe at me saying this because I don't know if it's exactly comparable, but it's pretty similar, I think, to uh, like the car industry. When you go to buy a car, you know, you're not, you don't shop around it. You, you can certainly, but if you're going to the lot, you don't have to shop around to a bunch of lenders. You can just go there and they're going to get you. Yeah, um, they're going right. to go and find you something. It's, yeah, it's going to be a different package depending on what your credit profile is like. But um, basically, at any credit profile at all, you're going to get qualified on Optimus. Um, and so, yeah, it's cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's, uh, that you're running into it out there. It sounds from everything I've, again, I, I don't work in financing much. I, I work with them a little bit to help out on some of their projects, but um, everything I'm hearing is is really, really great things. Um, again, it's, you know, over 90% approval rates versus 70 or whatever. That's a pretty, pretty substantial difference. Oh, that, that's that's yeah. more than a substantial difference. That's a massive difference. Yeah. Did he say <laughs> Ryden what, uh, what he liked about it? Did anything jump out for him? He just said, you know, for him, we, we didn't dive into a whole lot of it because that wasn't really what our meeting was about it just kind of happened in passing um right when we were discussing you know who he did financing through or if he was even offered because you know i i always ask guys if they offer financing and it it still kills me how many people today still tell me that they don't or they don't want anything to do with it and i said i will tell you that the way things are going especially the way things are going oh, yeah. into 2023 if you do not have something in place to be able to offer financing you're going to be in a world of hurt because most most homeowners right now don't have, you know, well, excuse me, I should say three years ago, they didn't have eight grand laying around for a change out. Now they don't have 16 grand for about the same change out right now. And next year, they're probably not going to have 23 to 24 grand for the same change out, depending on how things could go. Yeah, and, and yeah, people yeah, are going to be say, financing yeah. everything. Unfortunately, the majority of people are going to be financing. The amount of play, jobs you finance is probably going to go from maybe it's half your business. It may go from half to eighty percent of your business. Who knows? But it's going to go up because everything else is going so high that people just don't have that kind of capital laying around to dip into anymore. When people used to, I don't know what the stat was, but they used to say the average family couldn't afford a, you know, five hundred dollar expense that was unforeseen, right? Yeah. Um, but it, even more than that, it's it's um, I, there's like a perception I think that it's like, well, you know, financing is for people who can't afford it. Which first of all, yeah, a lot of people can't afford it. That's a lot of money. And then secondly, like, no, wealthy people, nobody pays. You know, when we hear about big time wealthy like companies being purchased or whatever, that's not straight cash. No, that's fine. Things are financed. That's the thing. When somebody who has a lot of money and understands how they can make a return on that money, if they can pay a few percent interest and they know that that same money they can invest and make 10% return on, why would they pay cash? Correct. For money that they can right, get a return correct. on. So it's not even just like, well, I'll just, I'll only target the, uh, you know, the people that I know can afford it. It's like, well, the people who can afford it want to finance it. Yeah, because they have yeah, reasons yeah. why they're going to do that. Like you said, to some people, money's cheap. Yeah, because they look yeah. at it in a, dip, at a different way. It's all yeah, about perspective. And, yeah, and in, in a more like an easy apples to apples comparison that you know a lot of people are familiar with, it's like whatever, uh, whatever like mortgage rates are at right now, like th you know four percent or whatever, even under. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, if you even if you had sitting in your pocket a half a million dollars and you could spend it without that an eyelash at, at it if you knew where you could make five six seven percent on that then why wouldn't you invest it and, and take the loan at four percent that's right yeah i mean you, i was gonna say right and if you want to go into we'll skip right into 2023 hvac yeah we can um does what do you know about what do you know about the stuff coming up lucas have you do y'all uh, talk about it any far as the HVAC industry? How it's getting uh, ready to change a little bit, or is that we, more too technical? No, nah, we hear a little bit about it. I'm, I'd be, I would be very curious to hear kind of what you guys um, think about it because uh, you certainly know more than I do. Um, I just came from a technical conference. I'm not a technical person, but I just came from a technical conference actually, um, and that's something that we talked a little bit about with kind of ESCO and HVAC excellence, um, and just sort of like well, refrigerant stuff, and then. Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to get your take, though, because I think you guys would certainly more know more than I do. Well, like Ryden said, right, yeah, what you got laying around to, to do a change-out, these, the the change-outs that are getting ready to happen are not going to be, you know, cookie-cutter change-outs anymore. No. The, the equipment, <laughs> the equipment, you know, mid, or base-seer, mid-tier, and high-seer, it's that that base 
Sears getting ready to change. You know, everything's getting more technical. Uh, control boards, the the motors, the compressors are changing. You know, two stage compressors for base sear stuff. Like all that's going up, and the cost isn't going to go down. No, I mean it's just it can't happen. Well, and I mean you think about it. You know, there's there's multiple different regulations that are driving this stuff. So you've got um, on one side. Yes, sear is changing, but not only is base level sear changing, the whole way we even get sear is all changing. Um, they creatively have named it sear two. You know, good job, guys. <laughs> we thought of that. Should, they should have hired Lucas. Um, I'm saying they should have just called it Silky Rhino. That's what two. I'm talking about. Yes, uh, two point uh, no. <laughs> But so you know. I know Dennis and I have talked about some of this before, but for for Lucas's sake too. So going to Sear 2, essentially what they're doing is they're changing how everything is rated is one part of kind of, I guess it's almost like a four-step thing they were trying to roll out together. So they're changing how stuff is rated. They're changing the efficiency level that the internal components have to be like 10% more efficient than they were before. It's part of it. Um, they were initially supposed to have refrigerant change in 2023 that has been pushed to 2025 however you know all these manufacturers have already spent their millions and hundreds of millions potentially all collectively to engineer product around a new refrigerant um just because you push they uh, is department of energy they that is requiring this is doe um and then you know just because that got pushed back who knows it doesn't it doesn't change what these guys are already having to be prepared to go to market with. So, and then, you know, the final part of it is, you know, what regulations change as far as what you can and can't put in. So one of my biggest topics I've had in the last few weeks, um, and really the last couple of, of work days, I had a couple really long conversations about this on Friday and had another couple today, um, is what, you know, really what's base sear changing to and what can't, what, what you can and can't sell. So for us and for the way the whole industry is going, essentially what would be 15 sear now on a current rating, if you put that on the new rating standard, the new rating standard goes from everything being lab tested at on point one static, which, you know, Dennis and most every guy knows is not real world condition at all right no, so that's basically no duck work. yeah so just, you know. the ratings are changing to be rated <laughs> on essentially a 0.5 static which really i wish it was slightly higher but it's a well, bit it's, more real it's world. Point 0.6 point it's somewhere it's, around point 0.6 yeah, between the two right yeah somewhere in there so you know what would be 15s here now if it you know in a perfect world is really only making 14 point something in closer to real world so they're trying to rate everything now closer to a real world condition which in my opinion actually does make sense yep um i'm still not a fan of how they're naming it or how it's looking but it does make sense what they're doing now because it's a fully new rating system you know, just like current AHRI now, if it's not something that's been rated on the current rating standard, you can't put it in. Well, January 1st, so, right? Well, yeah, like right now. So as of January 21st of 2023, all new product that's going to the market is going to have a sticker and be proof that it has been rated on that new rating system will exist in, you know, an AHRI database, so on and so forth. However, in order for those products to be rated on that new rating system, manufacturers have to pay for their products to get rated on this system. Well, majority of all these manufacturers had new product that was getting ready to go to market with a new refrigerant. So they've paid all this money for that to be what's rated on this new rating system. Now, it just so happened that they've pushed refrigerant or refrigerant change back, but the pressures are so close that basically I think they're just going to be dumping 410 into what these new systems are and they're going to work just fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then two years from now they'll put the new refrigerant in it. 
But <laughs> the headache is, you know, a current air conditioner for us down here is not rated on this new system. So if we've got an air conditioner sitting in the barn, you know, if we don't sell it by December 31st or it's not put in by December 31st of this year, it's a paperweight because we can't sell it come January 1st. Yeah. I mean, it's that so, the ordering and all that. I was talking to a guy that, that works for us. He's got to, he's got to put in all the orders for us as a distributor, you know, by April 1st, <laughs> like, you know, this weekend. Yeah. So for the year, for the year, like, you know, you try to, and he's trying to go back and look and see what, you know, what the sale history is. And the last two years is not really something to go by. Right. COVID jacked. One no, up none of it makes sense. Supply chains jacked one up and all this. Right. So, uh, you can't just go back four years and go, yeah, we sold this many ACs because <laughs> you've picked up 10 companies by then. I mean, or more, you know, depending on supply house, but so, uh, yeah, it's getting ready to get a little hairy. Um, so for all that, so the question that I've been dealing with from people is, well, how's anybody going to know, you know, well, who's going to enforce this? Well, isn't this a County thing? Does the County control this? So I had a contractor t- that I talked to Friday <laughs> that had talked to, you know, his local, local inspector for, for his County. And the inspector's like, oh, well, if your permit's pulled, you know, you know, we're fine with it. You know, you can put it in when it needs to be done. Because the question is, you know, let's say it's November 15th and you're putting in um, an AC coal, or excuse me, a coal and furnace to rough a house in. But you know you're not going to set the outdoor unit until May. Right. Well, if you're doing that, you better make sure that that outdoor unit that or excuse me, that coal and furnace are going to match an outdoor unit that you have to put in next year. Yeah, yeah. When you go to register it, well, the database is not going to let you. Well, and it's not even that. So, you know, the next question was, well, how you know, how's the county going to enforce it? Well, one, the county can't enforce it. The county can't change it because I said, contractor, if, if the county is saying that you can do this, I said, you better get it from them in writing. I said, because here's the problem. It's not a local or state law. The deadline and the change for 2023 is a federal law, which means it rules a roost over any local law for this. It is a right. federal hard stop. Now, nobody may know about it, you know, first time it happens but when an inspector goes out and sees it and that piece of equipment doesn't have a 2023 sticker on it which is going to be one big problem if the homeowner gets wind of it the homeowner is going to cry foul if you get caught putting one in past that date they can fine you and then they can force you to change the entire system to a new piece or a new system rated on the new system at your cost. Yeah, that's not cost efficient. That's not cost efficient. So, no. <laughs> you know, that's it is a true hard stop. So, you know, I keep having these conversations with guys that, you know, we have to start planning and you have to start planning on what you're doing, especially if you're doing big custom home construction that takes nine months to trim a freaking system out right. you know either you better buy that unit and you solder it in somehow some way by december 31st um now one guy was like well what if i soldered this thing in on december 31st and i just call an inspection i'll fail the inspection but at least they'll know i put it in before the end of the year <laughs> <laughs> i was like well you know that's great that's not a bad idea People- but <laughs> People will work harder to try to beat the system than, right? Like, if you're not cheating, you ain't trying. That's, that's it. So, you know, the, the big thing is, one, um, I, I tell, you know, I've always been a big proponent of dual fuel, especially growing up where I grew up where it was, you know, propane and cold. It was always, we're putting a heat pump in to save as much as we can for people. Because there is right. no natural gas in the mountains. 
Um, but, you know, there's going to be a lot of cases where guys are going to have to start planning on trimming stuff out with heat pump and doing dual fuel because while we have a hard stop on ACs, we have we can sell heat pumps until they're gone. Yeah, you sell through. You can sell them through. And all of that is because we all know that the DOE is pushing to get away from fossil fuels as much as they can. Even though there's a whole bunch of fossil fuel helping us create all this power they want to use. But, you know, that's a whole other topic. What are you seeing where you're at, Lucas? Are you seeing a lot more heat pumps or are you seeing a lot of gas? What do you typically see? I mean... Uh, Like, I'd say probably a mix here. Um, Okay. Yeah, but... I nationally, I don't. I'm I'm in like Pacific Northwest. Um, I suppose it's probably a lot of uh, environmentally driven. Like depending on where you are, what kind of what kind of climate you have. Right. Yeah, they're trying to get rid of gas, man, altogether. I know California and well, in North Carolina. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of North Carolina trying state. to get rid of it. Yeah, just build neighborhoods and don't run any kind of gas in there at all. Just full power, full electric. I don't know. That power's got to come from somewhere, man. Yep. I don't. I don't know how to look at that, but. Um. So yeah, that's great news, riding. Yeah. Awesome. Good uh, pick me up there. Yeah, real pick me up. Uh, so what you guys are saying <laughs> is that everybody needs to make sure that they so walk we're... in their busy season and move units while the calls are coming in. This well, summer. and it's that's it's, it's really. It, I mean, it definitely yeah, is that. Sell out. So definitely uh, <laughs> make sure to check. Uh, I'll definitely put links for EGIA back into our link tree as usual. Um, so that way you can go find some of these resources. I really want to get a, a local guy to go through some of that program and have him on here. Yeah, no. I really do. I mean, I, I was I always try to, cause you guys have been good to us. I've always tried to sell it. You know, I want to get somebody on here and I mean, I can't go through it. You know, I yeah. want to get a guy on here yeah. that's close to us and, and see what he thinks. Yeah. I mean, I would be happy. It's a uh, one, whenever we do walkthroughs with, um, kind of partner organizations as well when we're talking to companies to partner with and we'll walk them through the system it's always a pretty like wow like going through the online system just the online system that doesn't even include we have in-person workshops uh you know in-person conferences and stuff but just walking through the online system people are usually pretty blown away by just kind of how many resources are there um and uh, your whole company gets access you know it's not just one person the whole company has access you can send your entire CSR team through the customer service module, the classes, see exactly how, you know, what they're scoring on their comprehension quizzes, how far along they've gotten, you can send all of your, you know, comfort advisors through the, uh, you know, in-home sales courses and, and such. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I feel you like you hit the nail on the licenses. head with... Exactly. Right. The, you know, we're all, most of us in this industry or at least some of the owners and stuff are very tech-driven, right? And I feel like uh, the pride gets in the way mm-hmm. of some of these businesses growing. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like we got the newer generation is seems to be pretty good at using their resources. You know, I always tell guys when I'm giving a training class, they're like, you got a book on this. You got a fold out on this. You got, I'm like, look, man, everything is on my phone. Like yep. take pictures of slides. And when I'm doing the class, right? Like, you got to start using your resources of what we got now. Um, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's understandable. People can, you know, don't want to give up control, right? They built the company. It's their baby. Um, right. And it's, so it's kind of like, I know best. And, and that's totally understandable to, to kind of have that view. But, you know, unfortunately there are, <clears throat> it's not realistic that any one person is going to be the best at everything. Right. Like you might do this very well, but you're just not as strong at, you know, like I said, marketing or, 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 Right. Um, I mean, that's why they have different different disciplines for all these when you study them, right? Marketing or pricing, accounting, financial structure, you know, lead generation, uh, sales. And so, yeah, it's it, it, this. And when you partner with training, it, it just gives you the ability to, you know, to actually get to uplift the whole company, um, bring your whole company up without having to give up a lot of control. You know, it's nobody's asking you to sell the business because you don't know how to get to the next level. You can talk to people who have. Um, this is something that I know uh, one of the trainers, Mark Madison, who I've, I've heard do keynotes a lot. And what he always says is, you know, 
if you want to get to be a you know a million dollar or ten million dollar um, contractor, you do that by talking to a million dollar or a ten million dollar contractor. Somebody's done it. Go talk to them and figure out what they did to get right. There. Yep. Um, and so yeah, this kind of gives you the ability to do that. You know, to to get in the you know pick the brain, see the videos, um, go to the classes of people who have you know regularly. Um, you know, Gary Ellis probably owns, I don't even know at this point, but you know, he buys a lot of contracting companies. He's probably got half a dozen at least. Um, you know, these are people who have consistently been able to apply these practices to a, a real life business. It's not teaching out of a textbook. It's boots on the ground. This is what is working right now at a contracting business. Right. Yeah. I always use my old boss as an example. You know, he was, he was that guy, right? He pride got in the way and you know, we built it up. It was a nice company. It was, everything was working pretty good. And he's like, yeah, we don't need, we don't need that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's only been 10 years now that we're <laughs> here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we, 10 years of falling on your face, you know, anybody can make it. <laughs> like yeah. we're talking yeah. about between one and five, right? That's that, that's that crazy time where, you got this work coming in you're like oh man what am i supposed to do now Mm -hmm. um i feel like you you either make it or or not in that first five years and you got to have some resources to get you over that hump for sure yeah exactly i mean that's what they they say that the you know not specific to our industry but just in general the reason most small businesses fail it's not because they can't get off the ground it's not because they don't have a good idea but you know the uh, plenty of small businesses do a good job but they just they can't the you know typically the owner, the CEO or whatever, um, you know, they, maybe they're a really good idea person. They're good with their hands in, you know, being the person with the boots on the ground at the beginning. Um, they're, but they don't know how to transition into a medium sized business. Cause that's just, it's a different skill set, right? Going from small business startup right. to like running, growing to a medium sized business where you're out of startup mentality. Um, that's why so many small to medium sized businesses fail with the small businesses that, that, make it a lot of them don't make it to the next step um and so nobody's saying you need to fire yourself and go hire somebody else but you know there are certainly tools and resources training avail- available to to help make sure that you have you know the mindset you, you everybody can develop those skills to to be able to grow their business um, that's everybody that's has where, the ability to do that that's where you see so many of them get get worried or, or start to just kind of kind of lose it is they they kind of almost have a freak out moment happen or when they have that realization that they have to get out of the field and actually go do the business business work. Yeah. And right. they just, they want to fight, they want to fight doing that because they're afraid to give up any control of what's going on in the field. And they just fight it and fight it, fight it, fight it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't do ride alongs a hundred percent of the time, right? At some point you gotta, you gotta let them fly or swim or something. <laughs> um, yep. But yeah, it's just, you can't, you can't be there for everything you have to. And that's like, um, I guess this is why we're just like going full circle, right? That goes back to culture, right? That you like, you're instilling a culture, you're hiring the team that you can trust to do that. You know, you don't need to look over their shoulder. Also, your business is not worth anything if it can't operate without you in it. Um, that's it's right. not a saleable business. Good point. Yep. Uh, that's the number one thing of any business. If you like, if you, they call it like struggle porn on the internet, you know, this idea that like, Oh, I've worked, you know, 80 hours. I haven't taken a vacation four years. And it's like, well, that's not cool. Don't aspire to that. Um, if you're, if your business cannot right. last two weeks without <laughs> you in it, um, you don't have to take a vacation, but if, if it physically cannot operate without you there for two weeks, then it's not a saleable business. You can't sell it. Um, because it, you're, it, there's no business. It's just you. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it's, uh, you got to get out of that mindset of like, I have to do everything myself. And, and that's how the, you know, that's how the good businesses go. Right. It's, it's, um, they empower other people. They empower middle managers, um, not just C-suite people, not just, you know, upper management, but they empower middle managers that can, you know, handle the business without having to micromanage every single second of every single role. That's a good point. My wife was always like, sweet, what beach are we going to in October? I'm like, yeah, no, we can't. We can't take a vacation this summer, right? Yeah. October, November. Oh, everything's closed. Sweet, it's awesome down there. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And it's not, you know, and I don't, I don't, I hope I don't sound, uh, uh, I don't patronizing or, or, or insulting when I say that. It's, it's not, it's not intended to, to single anybody out. Oh, no, right. Um, but it's no. just the truth, right? No. It's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, that's, and, and I think most people <clears throat> have, some, not everybody, but most people have some goal in mind that they'd like to sell their business at some point. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do uh, to get ready for that. We actually have a whole 
educational module on how to kind of make your business get ready to actually sell it, make it saleable. But, um, you know, one of those things is, yeah, like I said, you just, if, if you, if you can't operate without you, then it's not a, it's not really a business. It's just a guy or a gal. All right. So I know you're a sports guy secretly have your little, uh, college <laughs> podcast there. Ah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like we need to it's get into, uh, it's not that little. It's pretty know, impressive. It's not, it's not little. It's pretty it's impressive. Few, I've been listening to it. It's got a few listeners. <laughs> um, this is kind of a sore little deal for me here. Um, I kind of took over a youth flag football team. <laughs> um, and it's – my AirPods are dying here. Um, yeah, it's so it's 9 to 11 uh, girls flag football. Is it your so, daughter or is this a random flag football team? Yeah, it's my daughter, and I got roped in, right? I walked out there for her to do her little tryouts, like a combine almost, right? <laughs> and, nice. uh Yeah. And, you know, the guy's like, hey, man, I remember you. She was on my soccer team. I'm like, yeah, hey, what's going on, man? It's like, yeah, she's wanting to do this. You know, it's kind of cool. It's at the Y. You know, it's like four teams. It's nothing huge. And AirPods are dying. Ah. Oh, no. Yeah, I think he's totally toast. I still see the occasional noise there, but yeah. This sounds like a bad episode of Roy D. Mercer. <laughs> hey, this is uh, Roy D. Mercer, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I've lost my headphones. Give me a second. I don't know what happened. I thought this is, sounds like a great. What is it? God, what was the show? Crank Yankers. Yes, that's what we should be doing yeah, right now. I remember that. Dang it, Lucas! Yeah, I'm totally drunk. Jerky boys. Well, crap. He can't hear you. I didn't even think about that, Lucas. I'm sitting here talking to all three of you, and Dennis is on speaker on the cell phone. <laughs> this is like the greatest technical difficulties ever. This is just full jerky, boys. God, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to think the last stand up that Chris and I watched. Chris and I watched a ton of stand up, which I guess if you're a Nate Bargatze fan, you probably watch a decent bit of stand up. Um, yeah, I'll do. I'll check out the stand-ups on Netflix every once in a while. We just watched uh, sure. Foxworthy's new one. It was pretty funny. I just watched oh. that one. It's pretty funny. I didn't know you had a new one. What's it on? Uh, it's on Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I was growing up. I don't random as hell because I grew up in Portland, Oregon, and Foxworthy is like pretty southern in his style. But uh, when I was growing up, I was like like die hard listening to like, the first two or three albums over and over and over again. Oh, I did too. So, yeah, I should check it out. All right. Every time I get a little bit toasted and I hear Jeff Foxworthy, I have to make a reference. And my wife always knows it seems to be the same ones. She's like, I know. I know. And she'll repeat it for me. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I do the same. Anytime somebody talks Just about Alabama, back, I'm, you know? I'm like, we've seen Alabama on the map. It's purple. And it's a random throwaway line <laughs> from like the first Jeff Foxworthy album where somebody like he says he was just in alabama and people start cheering and he goes oh you're from alabama and he goes no you're just like oh we've seen alabama on the map it's purple uh and so i don't know for some reason that one's stuck in my head connected but i don't hear you my god i'm sorry dennis (laughs) it is ironic that the tech guy is the one having tech problems just throwing that out there that has no backup an hvac system i can fix it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh in the freaking olympics oh my god yeah yeah we get her <laughs> the southern olympics. go on him that goat in <laughs> <laughs> fencing yeah that's right <laughs> go on him that goat in <laughs> oh lord Let's see. What other funny comedians can we fill space with, Lucas? <laughs> uh, there was a new... Uh, so on one of the episodes of the stand-ups, this is... I don't know if you know that one. That, that, oh, like yeah, yeah. 30-minute stand-up show on Netflix. we just watched some of those, too. Yeah, there was a guy called Dusty Slay who was pretty funny. Long, straight hair. Uh, yes. Glasses. And yes. actually, he was just on the had, podcast, had, podcast had, today, too. And he had the trucker hat on, and he's like, yeah, I don't look yeah, like yeah. a guy who'd wear this trucker hat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he kept his like his like his catchphrase was like instead of being like the comedian who says, "Are we having fun yet?" He kept going, "We're having fun. We're having fun." Whenever he would drop a joke, it wouldn't go well. He'd go, "Man, we're having fun. We're having." Fun. Yeah, he was good. All right, let me 
definitely try this again here. Welcome back, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> we lost you wow. there for a minute. Uh, Tech guy, technical difficulties. Yep, and uh, <laughs> Lucas and I did a piss poor job of carrying the show. So, what would we do without Dennis? I don't know. <laughs> I would just still sit here and pretend. And Well, half the time, I'll admit, there's shows where I don't say a whole lot because I honestly just get so in depth i guess not in depth but i just get so in tune listening to the conversation i'm such a big fan of our own show i guess sometimes that i disappear in it I, I, I just like i just love listening to where conversations are going and sometimes i, right. I don't want to jump in the middle of that i just want to want to see where it goes that's the, that was the the regulations the tech conversation for me i was very you guys know a lot more about that stuff than i do very interested to hear that's that i might my stuff doesn't touch, like my job doesn't touch that stuff as much, but I know it's such a huge macro issue that impacts the whole industry that I'm kind of curious to, interesting to hear two people who know what they're talking about kind of go in on it. Well, I guess you heard one. You sure as hell didn't hear me know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All I know is that uh, the local county inspector does not get to tell you what you do. This is the federal law, boys. Yeah. That's it. Write that down. Yeah. We're good on that. Yeah. Write so, all right. So who do you, who do you got in the, uh, What's the last two teams we're going to watch play in the uh, March Madness, Lucas? Ooh, um, <laughs> I mean, so let's see. Nova just lost a starting guard, and they only played six people anyway. So that, that feels like a <laughs> right? no-go for Nova. So they're down to a five-man rotation. So I'm going to take Kansas out of that side. And I guess I'll take Duke because it seemed like such an anomaly oh, that UNC just, hammered Duke so horribly at home to end the season. That'd be hilarious if they did it again, though. Yeah. I mean, you know what? If Coach K, I, I, I say this. If Coach K had to come down to it, he'd probably almost rather play Carolina last than anybody else. Oh, but yeah. if he loses to him, God, he's going to hate himself so bad. But Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm a Tar Heel fan, so sorry, Coach K, if we <laughs> kick your ass. But you yeah, know. so our, our our work meeting we had was at Cherokee Casino, right? And they got a new sports book. So I threw some bets down mm-hmm. while I was in there. You can you can mail them in if you win. Um, but so I threw twenty on North Carolina to win the whole thing, mm-hmm. which was pretty good. It pays. Uh, I think it pays six six hundred bucks. You know, not bad for twenty bucks. Yeah, um, especially this late in the game. That's yeah. Very so good. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're a golf. You watch any golf? Keep up with any golf at all? Uh, no, I like listen to PGA or anything. I listen to the Tony Kornheiser show, and before every uh, like major event, not not capital M major, but like every you know prominent event right he has steve sands from the golf channel on and steve sands tells me who to bet on and so i bet on whoever steve right. sands tells me to bet on <laughs> so that's why i did not win the last one which was i think i had francesco molinari uh called morikawa and, uh, and i think lowry but okay are you gonna tell me who to bet on because i'm taking what's i don't even know what's coming up but i'll I, I need some well so we just had the the dale the match play which i don't know if they do i think they just do that one time a year um, that have match play championship, but I got Valero Texas so, Open coming up. Is that the next one? Yes, that's coming up. Okay. Do you this have a, one just was just Sunday. Finished up just yeah. uh, just this past Sunday. But so I had Kevin Kisner, who's like 29th in the world, and I threw 20 on him to win the match play, and he made it to the last two guys <laughs> and lost, but. He was playing like a 25 year old, uh, Scotty Scheffler, and he's like 38. Like, he had to play two rounds on Sunday. He was done. Like, that's a big, it's a big gap in age there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, even though it's golf, it's still, they, they're walking, you know, they're doing the whole thing. So, um, almost nailed that one. That was, that would have been a good little, little scrape up there. But, Anyway, what I was getting into with the youth sports, right? I don't know. You, you got kids? You got kids in sports? Kids I, at all? I do not. Okay. So, I grew up playing. You know, I know Ryden grew up playing football. I don't know what all we grew up playing. I grew up playing baseball. but Baseball for me. Youth, not football. Youth sports are, are on the struggle, man. 
I hate to come on here and say that, <laughs> but gosh, man, they're just they're they've changed a lot since I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff has, right? But um, can't get coaches. Nobody wants to volunteer. Everybody wants to show up and, and bitch, right? But nobody wants to coach. Um, so, yeah. So my daughter signs up for this team, flag football, girls, nine to eleven. I'm like, that's kind of cool, right? It's five on five. Um, and there's four teams, and our coach is he picked the our we're the Dallas Cowboys, so that was the first red flag um, but uh <laughs> so he's like hey you want to help me coach and i'm like yeah i'm sure man i'll i mean friday one friday night practice and a saturday game that's all it is that's the commitment um it's one hour right i'm like yeah i can help man i'll, I'll throw some passes or you know whatever yeah, no, he can't make it to the the practice. Can't can't make it to the game. He's texting me like, "How'd how'd you do Saturday?" Oh. I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> dude, come on, man!" Like, he totally shit on me. Um, he's like, well, "I'll make it to that." We got like one Sunday game. I can make it to that. I'm like, "Why did you sign up to coach, man?" I'm like, really? Um, uh, yeah. So I got that going for me. And and so here's the deal. Like, I, the first game. I go out there and I'm, I'm probably more nervous than the kids. Right. Like did I mention they were girls, right? It's nine yeah. to 11 year old girls. I throw that out there. Um, so I can be on the field and call the plays in the huddle. And I just kind of stand back there when they, when the play forms, like they're not out there by themselves. So there's my buddy who's coaching the bills he walks out there, so it's just like me versus him. The it's, like, it's like Madden. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like Madden. It like, Madden. I got this little dry erase board, right? And I'm I'm trying to draw these plays out that these girls have not seen in their life. And I'm trying to beat him, and it it literally felt like I was playing Madden. Like That's him. not the stupid play where I run downfield and act like I'm lost, is it? Oh, <laughs> man, I'm like... He he's he's like three years in, right? He's got like he looks like Georgia Tech back there with uh he's got like nine handoffs and flea flickers and all this <laughs> crap going on. And he just completely destroyed me. But um Is there much passing at that level or is it mostly it's like yeah, it's like wing T like run nah, the ball every time we can't really throw it on field. Right, so you got a center and a quarterback and you got three you got to do something with right so uh so just like girl on our team back in the day for n64 yes. right yeah. right <laughs> right so classic dude when the game started i'm like man trying to come up with a play like right then and they i got two or three kids on the team that they don't even know what a football is <laughs> i mean for real seriously like uh but we got a our quarterback can she can launch one down but she throws it everybody's head right she don't she don't throw at their stomach and Just. she can whip a spiral, man, but she it's too much. Yeah. She's just humming it and they can't catch it. I mean, they literally can't catch it. Um, so yeah, so I was trying to come we we did pull off a couple couple long passes. Um you know, you start on the five yard line and if you get past half the field, that's first down. First right? down you get yeah, four sure. tries to get past half the field and then uh, you get inside five yards, you can't – it's a no-run zone, so you can't run once you get the red zone there. But um, interesting, man. It's interesting. I don't think I'll do it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, prob- that? Probably, it's, you, know, uh, you know, you weren't expecting the full the full experience that uh, you apparently signed no, up I was for. No, really, I, was, I was really looking forward to helping. Um. Yeah, I show up. I'm like having a little parent meeting. I'm like, look, guys, I didn't sign up for this, but I'm gonna, you know, give it hell. But <laughs> so, like, this would be like, like, like Will Smith is head coach responsibilities, and Martin Lawrence is or no, Martin Lawrence <laughs> and uh, Chris Rock is you. <laughs> Martin, I miss me some Martin Lawrence. Well, you know, they were in Bad Boys together. You know, it's uh, yep. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah you're, you're I'm Chris gonna Rock. make a meme for that. Yeah, you're Chris Rock, <laughs> and it's it's yeah, it's like uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I just Dennis, want to help, and, and he just slaps me. Head like, coach no, your coach is written on <laughs> is written on Will Smith's face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we can just we can make his memes in real life. <laughs> You know the first the first we were on defense first right and this there's one girl on there that's just she's got an opinion on everything like why aren't we doing this why aren't we doing that can we run this play can we run that play and i'm like look you're killing me just just be quiet let me let me let me <laughs> figure this hand out her, hand her the dry erase board and say like, here you go yeah have fun so she goes i want to i want to blitz right so on defense you got to stand behind a seven yard cone out and if you want, that person can run in and get the quarterback. But once you cross the line of scrimmage, that quarterback can run. So she's like, I want to be the I want I want to blitz. I'm like, all right, go out there and blitz. She runs in. That quarterback's probably the fastest kid oh, in the league. Geez. She just zips out. Yeah. And that the girl on our team falls, which makes it even worse. And that girl <laughs> scores a touchdown. And she cried the whole game. <laughs> Literally crying. And I'm I'm standing over there looking around like, what am I supposed to do with this? I mean, there's no uh, crying in flag football. <laughs> I'm looking at my wife across the field, right? That's what my dad said. There ain't no crying in flag football. I'm looking across the field at my wife like, you want to come over here and get this? Like, I don't know what to do with it. I mean, there's a lot I want to say to this kid, but I can't. Um, <laughs> like, what am I? Yeah, man, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. But – We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah, I got some more Madden, more Madden this weekend. Some real life Madden. Uh, yeah, so you got to. I mean, now you got to like fun. play some Madden at home. It's like homework. That's true, right? Yeah. Straight running plays. That's what I'm going to do this weekend. It's all. It's going to be all running plays. Yeah, my my ill advised. You said you were just at an, at an event at the casino. So I was. I went to uh, uh, HVAC Excellence, which is like the ESCO Group's um, technical conference for like HVAC educators uh, in Vegas last week. And I was there for, you know, we talked about this last time, the foundation, Workforce Development Foundation. So I was trying to connect with the uh, trade schools. And so while I was there, I was like, I should go be a good fan. And I <laughs> put $100 <laughs> on uh, the Mariners to win the World Series. They've never been to the World nice. Series before. Nice. So, I mean, it's not the what smartest the, bet. But what was the odds on that? Uh, 28 to 1. So 100 bucks pays 2800 There you go. Yeah. 28 Okay. I think I got like 107 or something, whatever it took to get to 3000 even the payout so Probably you know they've bucks, never been yeah. before but um that just means that they're due right that's right yeah i think they're the only one that hasn't been before i guess i think previously it was the uh nats but the nats won a few years ago so yeah i think they're the only team that's never been to the world series so good for them so one of the guys that was in our little group last week he put a hundred on on north carolina and I think you put a hundred on Duke, so it might be a wash there. But ah, I'm not a hedger uh, guy. Like, make you know, say it with your chest. No hedging here. Right, right. Yeah, he's so he put a hundred on on North Carolina, which um, I think I put twenty on him. Pays uh, six hundred bucks or something. Yeah, that's not bad at all. We'll see. Yeah, I did get into a little teams. craps. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that I did that's, get into that some table's craps. our only friend in us. It is a good table. It's a, so it's a digital table, but you throw dice on it. It's like a yeah. It's like they put bubble crap plexiglass on a regular table, basically. Yeah, so you got your own little betting screen where you can kind of do your own thing, and then when it's your turn, you can reach, stand up, and, and roll the dice on this table. Which is so there's no chips on the table, but it, like I said, it's kind of like plexiglass. It, it's not felt. Um, but man, I can roll on that thing for real. <laughs> if, I swear, uh, if you if you even have a basic dice set and just can hit a landing zone, you can throw on that table pretty well. Yeah, so I rolled I rolled thirty three times my first roll on it. <laughs> Which, if you're any, if you know anything about crafts, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot right. of rolls. No kidding. It is. Jesus. The guy. So the guy next to me had six hundred bucks when I walked up, and he walked off with five grand just on my roll. Jeez. Yeah, he started once he seen once I got past ten rolls, he started to hammer down on the on the the bets, and yeah, I roll. I finally rolled a seven on the thirty third time, and. He's like, cash out. I'm out of here. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I just, I just, 
He should have gave you, know, you a tip. I made like forty five hundred. I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, that's that's a commission situation. I feel like. Yeah, that's a five dollar table too. That's a cheap table. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. All right, so uh, you got anything else you want to talk about on some EGIA? You covered pretty much everything. I know y'all got. You said you you got some stuff coming up that. You know, once it comes out, shoot it to us, and we can yeah, for sure do a little do a little social media posting. Yeah, well, like been... like you said, you know, uh, sorry to jump on you, Lucas. No, but, please. Uh, today, you know, we're recording this earlier, but the day you're listening to it today, on Friday, it is all live today. So go to our Instagram, click our link tree links, and you can get links all to EGIA right there. Yep. Yep um yeah for sure we uh we got some event announcements coming up as well that i'll keep you all in the loop on i know you guys are always uh, uh involved there so um, we'll be announcing the upcoming of the upcoming the big upcoming events uh in the next <clears throat> probably two weeks and then um yeah other than that i mean we, we covered it you know head to egia it's uh, mycontractuniversity.com or just egia.org egia.org but um you can head there to kind of see everything that's available uh, start a free trial, no risk, absolutely free. Um, gives you access to all the online education, uh, 30 days free. Um, yeah, I just uh, rewrote the fall workshop schedules. So that'll be hitting pretty quick here too. That's virtual and in-person workshops available to members. Um, so we always try to schedule uh, like active workshop stuff, you know, live workshops, be they virtual or in person um, in the shoulder seasons, obviously most people don't want to pull out of their business in July. So um, just kind of running right. out the spring lineup right now, and then they'll get fired back up in, um, in the fall. We do a couple during the summer, but um, really it's going to be that seizing the summer stuff during the summer. There's going to be the kind of the main focus of our content. Um, but yeah, the, the, so you can look for it events.mycontractoruniversity.com. Um, you'll see the the fall events coming up pretty quick. There's also some Optimus financing, um, kind of free virtual workshops and stuff that are giving people an idea how to grow their business with financing. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of good stuff. Um, you know, there's plenty of stuff. Uh, EGI is a membership organization, but there's plenty of stuff you can get access to for free without joining too. So just you know, we're out there trying to trying to help people build better businesses. So um, you, know, you can do that just through membership. You can do that just by kind of consuming our, our weekly newsletter. The Contractors Business Blueprint has a ton of free educational resources as well. So I'm um, just trying to help people out. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for, for the platform as always. Really enjoy talking to you guys. Um, always a pleasure. Always happy to be here. Thanks for coming Sweet. on as always, Lucas. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thanks, sure. man. For sure. Thank you. And uh, send us a picture of some of your beers you got. Your- Oh, I will. Tinkering with out there. A little Ill, ill-tempered gnome. Three-tempered. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The third-tempered gnome. Third-tempered gnome, yeah. Yeah, my Beer of the Month Club is actually showing up uh, this week, so we'll uh, we'll see what's in there. Hoping for some oh. something, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right, man. Well, have a good night, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks as always, guys. Take it easy, man. See you, man.